So a few weeks ago I asked you what Kirby Mouthful version you wanted to see and it was a pretty resounding, give us the Kirby. So I did. Then this week I, um, uh, well I kind of got carried away. Hey folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things. And this week, I'm gonna make all the Kirbys. Okay fine, not all the Kirbys, but maybe, possibly, definitely more than you probably might think. I'm gonna start with my personal favorite, which is of course the vending machine. So I'll need a rectangular vending machine shaped armature to help me keep things shapely. Quick pro tip here, I like to test the saw on my fingers before I start to make sure that it's good and sharp. With my cardboard armature cut to size, I'll mark out where his mouth slash can dispensing hole will be so that I can chop it out before wrapping my tiny cardboard present in a thin layer of clay wrapping paper. With the cardboard fully covered, I'll give it an initial smoothing and oral detailing before setting it aside and getting started on the next mouthful. I'll start with a little ball of clay, then roll it at an angle to give it a nice tapered tip. And with a bit more smoothing, I've got myself a pretty sweet dunce cap. Then I can lay out a thick pasta sheet of clay, square the edges, cut the center out, combine the two, and then with a bit of blending, you've got yourself a pretty sweet traffic cone. Of course, if you want to kick the authenticity up to 10, make sure you carve the bottom out. Tip number two, hold the clay with a firm hand while cutting. That way you know you've cut too deep into the clay when your hand starts hurting. Otherwise, with the center cord and the underside blended and smoothed, I'll go over the outside a few more times until I'm happy with the shape. Now for water balloon Kirby, I'm gonna need a big flat piece of clay. This then gets wrapped around a large ball of aluminium foil and built up until I've got the fat bottom balloon shape that Mr. Mercury was such a fan of. Outside of the shape there isn't a whole lot of detail to worry about yet, but to help with the sanding stage later I'll take some time and make sure it's as smooth as the scarred and gnarly hands can get it. Then I'll take a tiny cutter and cut out a tiny hole for his mouth before setting him aside and getting started on the next version. Once I flatten a small ball of clay, I can use a large hole cutter to cut a large hole and then carve the center out. And a series of pokes, prods, and thumb related antics, and I've got myself a nice smooth Kirby ring mouth. And then last but certainly not least, I need to make a light bulb. To do this, I'll wrap an oval shaped piece of aluminium in translucent clay, then smooth it until it's somewhat egg shaped. Why translucent clay? Well, that's so when I stick a light up Kirby's butt, I can light up his mouth. Why an egg shape? I don't actually know why. It seemed like a good idea at the time, but I really don't know why I went with an egg shaped light bulb. At any rate, with the bulb baked, I'll pull out the aluminium, leaving me with a hollow head. Then I can build up the rest of the body with some more translucent clay. And with my initial shapes finished, it's time to get on to the smoothing process. So for a change of pace, I'm just gonna shut up and let you enjoy the calming ASMR related sounds of high grit sandpaper on oven cured polymer clay. And that means we're on to detail time. I've added some vending machine lips to the can tosser, and a couple of tiny grains of clay rice will serve as his eyeballs. Then I'll stick a couple cone-shaped Kirby arms onto the side, and then admire my strong manly hands that are totally capable of holding a small object. Then I'll squish a couple of clay beans onto the bottom of the vending machine to act as his feet. I want the water balloon to be blowing water out of his mouth, so I'll start by adding some round lips to the mouth hole, then a couple balls of clay on either side will be his big round cheeks. Then to really sell the impression that he's giving it his all, I'll add a couple little apostrophes of clay that will act as his squinting eyes. Then just like the vending machine, he gets a couple little cones for arms and some more beans for feet.
Next up, I want to add the Kirby layer to the traffic cone, so I've rolled out an extra thin pasta sheet of clay that I can then set the cone on top of. Then it's just a case of smooshing and smoothing the Kirby layer onto the cone until I've got a nice, smooth, Kirby-skinned pylon. And a couple more grains of rice for his eyes, some cone arms and bean feet, and it's on to the Kirby ring. The ring gets its own set of eyes, cone-shaped Kirby arms and bean feet. However, to give a really exciting pose, I'll angle the arms and feet in such a way that it looks like he's leaping upwards. Finally, the light bulb gets his arms and feet attached in an exciting upward leap as well, then I'll give him a quick drill bit enema to ensure that I can run an LED up into his head to light him up later. Now because Kirby is pink, and pink is one of those paints that just doesn't tend to get a lot of coverage, I want to make sure that I prime each of these guys white. And then to help ensure that I get a nice even coverage, I'm going to turn to my airbrush. Otherwise, the painting process here is about as straightforward as it gets. I want to put pink paint on each of the Kirby's. Finally, to break up a bit of the monotony of a one-tone pink palette, I'll blend some lighter pink and white into the edges and around the tops to simulate sunlight coming down from on high. Now at this point, I looked at this utter monstrosity of a light bulb and realized that it's just awful. So I threw it away and started again. So to that end, I'll start by making my light bulb round like a light bulb should be. I'm also going to make it out of a solid piece of clay and then drill the cavity into the head afterwards. Then I'll build the body out of normal clay since the bottom doesn't need to light up anyways. Finally, Kirby's mouth actually opens up around the center of the bulb, so I'll add some clay lips to differentiate between the Kirby parasite and the bulb host. Then a couple tiny eyeballs, a quick paint job, and you can admire just how awful that original design was. Then we're on to painting the smaller details. I'm going to treat this process like batch painting and move between the Kirby's depending on what color I have on my brush. So I'll start by painting the red of the ring's mouth before highlighting his lips with black. Then I can paint his eyes black as well before working my way across the other four sets of eyeballs. And with the black on my brush, I'll paint the vending machine dispenser and lips before painting all the various shoes a nice Kirby shoe red. Then I can add the ocular details, starting with dark blue bottom portion, followed by a lighter blue highlight, and finally big white irises. Then Kirby gets the little black metal dispensary flap, and the pylon gets his pylon painted a pylon orange. And then the last step in the painting process is adding those adorable kawaii cheeks. Uh, oh yeah, the other last step is going to be painting the eyes with a shiny gloss varnish. Otherwise, with the painting done, we're on to the little details, starting with a couple tiny cans being fired out of the vending machine's mouth, which means I need to make some tiny cans. I'll start by cutting some little discs out of clay and then using a variety of different tools, I'll shape the top and the bottom parts of my can so that they look like the top and bottom parts of a can. Generally, when it comes to sculpting, I find the best technique is making the thing look like the thing it's supposed to look like. To make the middle of the cans, I've cut a couple more discs out and then I'll stick the top and the bottom to the, well, the top and the bottom, and then I'll roll them together so the edges blend. Then it's just a case of painting the cans with an appropriately can-like coloring scheme, slapping on some arbitrary logo, painting the metal parts a shiny metal color, and then coating it in a gloss varnish. I decided to go with a can of juice, and a can of everyone's favorite knockoff brand of Coke, Cola Cola. 
I'll then glue the cola cola into Kirby's mouth and then the can of juice I'll just glue to the underside of the flap so that it looks like he's in mid can attack. Now for the water balloon, I need to make a spurt of water and I think that one of these little pipettes will be the perfect size. So I'll fill a condiment tray with UV resin, then heat it up with a heat gun so it's extra thin. This then makes it possible for me to suck it up using the pipette. To get the curve of the water jet, I'll then bend the pipette as I blast it with a UV light. And it's just a case of degloving my pipette water spurt and shaving the numbers off. To make the big splash at the tip of my spurt, I'll fill one of my silicone balls with a bit of UV resin, making sure to get the tendrils running up the side. Then I can stick the tip of the pipette spurt into the splash and lock it in place with a UV light before removing it from the mold. Finally, I'll add some bigger droplets onto the end of the splashes to bulk them out. Then I'm ready to attach it to my water balloon, so I'll give Kirby a mouthful of resin which will work as the glue to hold the water in place. Now I decided about halfway through this project that I didn't want to make a single base to hold all the Kirbys. Instead I want them to each be standing on their own so that I can randomly litter them around my apartment or I can bring them with me when I visit people and leave them as little horrifying mementos. However, that means that I need to modify a couple of my Kirbys so that they work as standalone sculpts. I figured the ring Kirby is jumping up excitedly, so I made a tiny stand out of resin and an acrylic rod, and then I wrapped it in cotton. Kirby always leaves little puffs of smoke and dust when he jumps, so I think this works pretty well. Now for my light bulb Kirby, I need a base that's unobtrusive, but will also hold the electrical for the LED. To that end, Nintendo sells roughly a billion amiibos every day, and they're just little black discs. So I figure if it's good enough for Nintendo, then it's damn well good enough for me. So I made a little disc out of clay, then drilled a hole into the top of it so I could run a little LED up through the base, into Kirby's butt, and up into his mouth. And I glued the wiring in place and tucked it under his foot. Then before gluing Kirby to the base, I gave it a quick coat of black amiibo paint. Finally with that dry, a dab of glue will hold Kirby in place, and we're on to our glamour shots. As always, a massive thank you to the wonderful folk over on Patreon that keep this channel running, and a special thank you to my newest patrons, Tiny Tim's Minis, Jeremy Mizilevich, Sana Mirko, Zachary Silverton, Rick Lipiet, Frostbringer, Trina Turkin, Austin Williams, Zach Battleson, Maya Papaya, Paige, GT8073A, Alchemical Abominations, Ed Esposito, and Feli. You are the real world objects upon which this amorphous pink blob of the channel latches. If you'd like to help out, then now seems like just a swell time to become a subscriber and leave me a comment down below. Otherwise, we'll uh, see you next time. Cheers.